mom threw away my childhood belongings and gave my room to her new husband's kids, so I called my grandmother. Growing up, my mother and I had a close relationship. We did everything together, from going to the movies to baking cookies on the weekends. But as I got older, things started to change. When my mother remarried, it felt like everything was falling apart. Her new husband had two kids of his own, and they all moved into our small two-bedroom apartment. There wasn't enough room for all of us, so my mom made the decision to pack up all of my stuff and throw it away. I will never forget the feeling of walking into my home and seeing all of my belongings stuffed into trash bags. I was completely blindsided, and I couldn't believe my mother had thrown away everything I owned. As I looked around, my eyes fell on the photo albums, the trophies and medals, the posters and artwork that adorned my walls, and the knickknacks and mementos I had collected throughout my childhood. It was all gone, reduced to nothing but garbage. I felt like I had been kicked in the gut. How could my mother do this to me? How could she throw away all of my memories, my accomplishments, my treasures? Had she forgotten that I existed? I confronted her in a fit of rage, demanding to know why she would do something so cruel. That's when she revealed her reasoning, her new husband and his kids needed more space in the tiny two-bedroom apartment they all shared. I was incredulous. How could she prioritize their needs over her own daughters? I was hurt, angry, and completely shattered by this revelation. In the heat of the moment, I lashed out, telling my mother that she shouldn't have married a broke-ass man if she knew she wouldn't be able to provide for her own daughter. I regretted those words as soon as they left my mouth, but at that moment, my anger and pain had taken over. My mother tried to defend herself, telling me that she was just trying to make things work for everyone. But I couldn't hear it. All I could feel was a sense of abandonment and betrayal. In the weeks that followed the fight with my mother, I was filled with a deep sense of loss and anger. I knew that I couldn't live like this in a house where my mother had made it clear that I wasn't welcome. So I took matters into my own hands. I gathered up all of my belongings that my mother had thrown away and brought them back to the apartment. I had to dig through the trash bags to find everything, but it was worth it. As I carried my things back into the apartment, I could see the shock and disbelief on my mother's face. She tried to stop me, telling me that I couldn't just barge in and take over. But I refused to listen. I had spent my entire life in that house, and I wasn't going to let my mother's new family take it away from me. When I got to my room, I started to unpack my things and put them back where they belonged. My mother stood in the doorway, begging me to stop, but I didn't care. I was so angry at her for what she had done, and I wasn't going to let her get in my way. When she tried to come into my room, I pushed her out and slammed the door in her face. It was the first time in my life that I had ever been so hostile towards my own mother, but I couldn't help it. I felt like she had abandoned me like she had chosen her new family over me. After that, things only got worse between us. We barely spoke, and when we did, it was through gritted teeth. I knew that I had hurt her by pushing her out of my room, but I couldn't bring myself to care. She had hurt me too, and I wasn't going to just let it slide. The tension in the house only seemed to escalate as time went on. My stepfather would constantly make snide comments about me and my presence in the house, and I could feel myself becoming more and more agitated by the day but the boiling point came when he decided that he wanted my room for his children. I couldn't believe the audacity of this man. He had already taken away everything from me, and now he wanted to take away the one place that I had left to call my own. I confronted him about it, telling him that he couldn't just come in and take over my space. But he wasn't having it. He told me that his kids needed more room and that my mom had agreed to it. I felt my blood boil at the thought of my mother betraying me once again. We got into a screaming match, hurling insults at each other with every passing second. I told him that he was a nobody, a man who couldn't even provide for his own family without taking from others. He retorted to telling me that I was just a selfish brat who couldn't handle the fact that things had changed. In the end, I knew that I had lost the fight. My mother sided with her new husband, telling me that I needed to learn to compromise and make sacrifices for the sake of the family. But I couldn't help feeling like I had already given up so much, and I wasn't willing to give up my room too. In a fit of anger, I threatened my mother and stepfather that I would teach them a lesson. They looked at me with shock and disbelief, but I didn't care. I was willing to do whatever it took to get my room back. I stormed out of the hall and went back to my room, slamming the door shut. I sat down on my bed, feeling helpless and alone. But then I remembered something. The two-bedroom apartment belonged to my paternal grandmother. She had given it to my mother and father to live in when they had first moved to the city. My grandmother was a tough woman, and she had always been there for me when my mother couldn't. I picked up my phone and dialed her number. When she answered, I explained everything that had happened with my mother and stepfather. I told her how they had thrown away all of my stuff for the second time and were now trying to take away my room. My grandmother was furious. 
she told me that she was coming over in two days as she was out of the city currently and that she would make sure that my mother and stepfather knew that they couldn't just treat me however they wanted. I felt a sense of relief wash over me. For the first time in weeks, I felt like I had someone on my side. Someone who would fight for me. I hung up the phone and waited anxiously for my grandmother to arrive. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew that things were going to change. Whether it was for the better or worse, I couldn't say. I don't know if it makes me the a-hole to go behind my mother's back and involve someone else in this whole mess. Update 1, four days later, as I heard the sound of the doorbell, I rushed to the door and opened it. My grandmother stood there with a fierce expression on her face, her eyes blazing with anger. She had always been my protector, and I knew that she wouldn't let anyone hurt me. I had hung tight for two days not allowing them to take over my room. As soon as she entered the apartment, she spotted my mother and stepfather standing there in shock. Without any warning, she raised her hand and slapped my mother hard across the face. I had never seen my grandmother act so violently before, and I was taken aback by her sudden outburst. My mother stumbled back, her hand on her cheek, and my stepfather stepped forward to question who my grandmother was. But before he could utter a word, my grandmother swung her stick at him, hitting him squarely on the chest. He stumbled back, his face paling as he realized that he was dealing with a force to be reckoned with. My grandmother looked around the small apartment, her eyes taking in every detail. She then turned to my mother and stepfather and declared that she was the owner of this apartment and that I was her granddaughter. I could see the fear in their eyes as they realized the gravity of the situation. As my grandmother continued to lecture my mother and stepfather about their behavior towards me, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. For the first time since my mother's remarriage, I felt like someone was on my side, fighting for me. The air was thick with tension as my grandmother's stern voice echoed throughout the small apartment. Her gaze was fixed on my mother and stepfather, who looked like they were ready to burst with anger and indignation. But my grandmother wasn't done yet. You two should be ashamed of yourselves, she scolded them. To treat your own daughter this way, to throw her out of her room? It's a disgrace. My mother tried to speak, but my grandmother raised her hand, silencing her. No, I don't want to hear it. Pack up your things and your stepchildren and get out of my apartment. I don't want to see either of you again until you learn to treat your own blood with respect. My grandmother's words hit my mother and stepfather like a ton of bricks. They stared at her in disbelief, mouths agape, unable to comprehend what was happening. My mother tried to protest, telling my grandmother that they had nowhere else to go, but my grandmother was having none of it. She stood tall and proud, with a look of fierce determination in her eyes. I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here, she said firmly. You can't just throw away your daughter's things and expect everything to be okay. You need to learn how to be a better mother and a better person. My mother and stepfather looked like they were about to argue, but my grandmother's gaze shifted to me. She looked at me with such tenderness and concern that it brought tears to my eyes. You, she said, pointing a finger at me. You're the only one who's staying here. I won't let them hurt you anymore. You're always welcome in my home. I felt a mix of emotions, relief, gratitude, and a twinge of guilt. I knew that my grandmother had just kicked my mother out of her home, and yet, I couldn't help but feel a sense of happiness at finally having someone on my side. My mother and stepfather scrambled to gather their things, their faces twisted in anger and disbelief. As they began to pack up their belongings, my grandmother turned to me and gave me a small smile. She gave me a warm embrace. Don't worry, my dear, she said. Everything's going to be okay now, hello. I'm here to take your opinion on something very serious. My own goddamn family is against me and thinks that I am a self-centered brat, and I need you guys to tell me otherwise. At least that's what I'm hoping will happen because I truly can't understand how any of this is my fault. So tell me, Redditors, if you think that I am the bad guy or not after hearing my story. Am I the a-hole for abandoning my horrible family and pregnant sister, Val, 19 female and not real name, for my career and along with that, my life? Let's get on with it then. Starting from the beginning, here's who my sister is as a person and a little about our family dynamics. Like many other families, my parents also loved the idea of treating one kid as the golden child while the other would be the black sheep. But something was different in our case, although my younger sister, Val, was the golden child, always pampered and loved by everyone she was not really good at anything including academics, sports, or art, she tried her hand at it, and every other thing she and my parents decided would be good for her. Now that I think about it, it feels like my parents had just decided that Val was their favorite child and her capabilities did not matter. I was the one working hard and yet it always went unnoticed. My family loved spending my hard-earned money but there was never any praise, only my shortcomings being put in the limelight. My sister was always jealous of me, something I never understood why. 
she was a lazy person who never wanted to work and would frame me for all of her misdeeds. And my parents would simply believe her and scold me. Life was not good for these people. Every time something happened my parents would tell me that I was older and was supposed to be more mature and responsible and should just let things go instead of arguing and creating a bad environment. Yeah, that was what my life looked like. Pretty common probably but the next things are not. So one day I had a huge argument with my sister after she took my favorite dress without asking and ruined it. She had no guilt and went along to say that it was a stupid dress, but it meant something to me because I had bought it with my own money. It was the first thing I had ever bought for myself with my own money. She told me that I was supposed to take care of her anyway so I clarified that I was not her mom and I was not responsible for her. To this, she responded that everyone in the family will always love her more and she does not need to work ever. I wished her luck with paying her bills if that was her mentality but she smirked and said that she would make me pay her bills, I didn't understand what she meant until now. A few weeks later, she was standing in front of me, announcing her teenage pregnancy. My family's reaction to my sister's pregnancy was so different than how they would react to me committing a minor error, it was so clear that no matter what she did, they would always support her. They were a little mad for some weeks after which they got along with the idea of her being pregnant and just assumed that it was my responsibility to take care of not only her but her unborn baby as well. When I asked about the father she brushed it off and on further insistence she started crying, making everyone shut me up. I was supposed to take care of it all while none of them cared about me. I tried talking to them but it was clear that no one would listen to me. So I stopped trying. Of course, my sister accepting right in front of me that she intentionally got pregnant to make my life a living hell managed to burst out all the emotions that I was trying to submerge. But arguing with them was like arguing with the wind. So I kept quiet for around two months as I tried very hard to get a job that would take me far away from this place and much to my joy, it happened. I got a job 800 miles away and the pay was great. But as soon as I broke this news to my family that I was moving out, everyone seemed to be very mad at me. I was bombarded with unnecessary questions about how irresponsible I was and what would happen to the baby. Like, should the mother not answer these questions instead of me? I had no problem in helping them financially but this was going way over the top. I couldn't just leave my life and live as the caretaker for my sister's kid. But my family has been going on and on and on since I broke this news as they have not been able to digest it. They are trying everything possible to sway me so that I change my decision. From being very sweet about it to yelling at me, Everything has been tried and tested so now they have started emotionally abusing me and trying to gaslight me. Like, I don't know. Is this really my fault here? Because I have always bent over backward to help my family with everything and never expected a thank you in return. But I have my own life and enough is enough. Update 1, hey. Thank you for the comments that's the kind of support required. And for those saying she is my sister and all, why would your sibling intentionally get pregnant when she is a teenager only for you to take on the entire responsibility of the baby? answer that. Coming to the reason why I'm writing this update, it's because my family succeeded at throwing me off my patience levels. So I have officially moved out. Currently, I am living with my friend. There are still a few weeks left after which I will have to shift to the new location for my job. And my family has not made anything easy. I really hate the way they pressure me all the time. The most ironic part is that the guy who got her pregnant was still in the picture but no one was expecting him to step up. I would still understand if he was out of the picture but he was right there, having lunch with my family and laughing with one another. My family had this weird idea that my sister and her boyfriend were not old enough to take on such a big responsibility and it automatically came upon me to help them and secure them financially. Like, why would I do that? They could get a job, he could at least. If they wanted to keep the baby, they were supposed to come up with a way to feed the baby as well. Why would I give up my life for this? It's just so messed up. I have no idea about this guy's parents or any idea about what my sister is actually up to. All I know is they are doing everything possible to demotivate me so that I would just give in to them and stay here. Update 2, hello. I'm updating today after a whole 45 days and I understand that's super late. But I have so much to share. I would have updated yesterday but I faced some tech issues. From tech, guys, you're talking to the new tech person from my new company. Kidding. That was not a great first impression but I am very proud of myself for bagging this position. And to speak of the devil, my sister is apparently in her second trimester indicating that she was pregnant quite some time before she actually announced it. And oh, intentionally as well. My family was furious when they heard that I was moving and tried everything possible to stop me, from calling my best friend's mom and creating a scene there to try to create a scene at the airport. Yes, the audacity. 
They are honestly behaving like I am some neglectful mother who is leaving her newborn behind while the real mother aka my sister is getting treated like a real teenager who just found herself in a difficult position. Update 3, geez guys, just when I thought I was done with all the drama, there's just more and more coming over. My family is unhinged. I can't believe how unbothered they are about this entire situation and they are behaving and believing that my choice of working 800 miles away is a whim, a rebellious phase. Yeah. And to add on top of that, my mom called me up yesterday and while I was hoping to have a civil conversation with her, she suggested that I should adopt the baby once they are born and poise as the mom so that my sister can restart her education without getting judged for being a teen mom. It feels like every single thing that my family is doing is for her. Anytime I think this is the worst they can do to me, they prove me wrong by doing something even bigger. I was so annoyed with everything going on that I told my mom straight away that I am not sure if I would even like to come back, let alone adopt the kid. I was very clear when I said that I don't care if they think this is a rebellious phase or something but I am not going to take any responsibility for my sister or her kid, something I have been repeating for a really long time now. Of course, she behaved in the same way by dismissing everything. Now, I could still ignore it but I got a call today, a little while earlier, from a friend who was asking how things were in my life as my mom told her that I was pregnant. Now I don't know how many people have this false information but I have decided to end this once and for all. So I made an announcement on my social media page writing everything and exposing them completely. Yes, my family thinks I went overboard with this but I simply don't care anymore. Am I the a-hole for this? I think not.